Hi, this is Dean Becker of the Drug Truth Network, and I'm here in Washington, D.C., attending the NAADPC conference. All right, once again, we're speaking with Judge Arthur Burnett, and uh, we're here at the NAADPC conference in Washington, D.C., and if you would, sir, uh, outline for us uh, what we've accomplished here and what we hope to do. Well, the particular panels that have been presented at this summit were people selected to come up with not only discussing what the problems are, but coming up with practical, pragmatic solutions to bring about change and to solve the problems. And so the result of this summit conference will be uh, taken under consideration and implemented to the extent we had the resources and people to do it to influence legislative changes as to crack cocaine versus powder cocaine with reference to juvenile delinquency programs to deal with rehabilitation and keeping kids out of the pipeline to prison to bring about affirmative changes in the number of African Americans who are ending up getting deeper and deeper into the criminal justice system. So the whole program here has been geared to future action programs where we will accomplish results. So this is not just a meeting just to meet, but to come up with proper solutions and to understand the real dynamics of the problems and how best to bring about changes to solve those problems. Of course, a big issue is adequate personnel, adequate financing, educating people generally so that they can then convey attitudes and views to legislators and others to change legislative priorities as to what problems we need to address in America as opposed to problems even abroad to solve the health care problems, the disparity problems, the disparate impact of criminal justice problems and so forth so we have a more intelligent, educated voter population that will elect people who will address these problems in a pragmatic and realistic fashion. And this is Howard Wooldridge of LEAP, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. I'm here in Washington, D.C. because I want to reduce crime, death, disease, and drug use. And we know that the way to do that is to end the prohibition of the 10 illegal drugs. Yeah, I consider it quite an honor to have with us uh, Mr. Kurt Schmoke, uh, um, one of the pioneers, I think, in, in opening, opening the dialogue on the need to uh, change our drug laws. Uh, Mr. Schmoke, what's your, your take on the proceedings thus far here at the NAADPC? Well, I'm very pleased that this uh, national coalition is having its third summit. Very Im important because there's still a lot of public education that has to be done. I'm glad we're here in Washington so we'll have an opportunity to go on Capitol Hill and maybe educate a few more legislators about the fact that our drug policy continues to do great harm in communities around the country and hopefully we can move towards uh, policies that will lessen uh, the harm in those uh, communities. So uh, it's, it's a struggle, but um, I know we're in here for the uh, long term, and hopefully uh, we'll start to see some greater enlightenment and improved policies, because as you know, it's my view that although we, we need a war on drug, it, drugs, it should be a public health war rather than a criminal justice war, because the criminal justice war is not getting us anywhere. We, we hear uh, many voices from around the country. We just heard a, a senator from the state of Louisiana talk about they have begun to make a difference there, uh, reducing the mandatory minimum sentencing and such. Um, and then we hear from others who say this is a, a type of bigotry that, that's practiced around this nation. Um, your thoughts on that, sir? How do we break the back of that, that bigotry? Well, it, it really is uh, just a shame that even under the current drug policy, uh, we really have two different wars on drugs uh, going on. I mean, in some communities, particularly if you're wealthy and you get in trouble with drugs, you go to treatment and you go to recovery and uh, it's treated as a health problem. But if it's low income people, it's treated as a crime problem. And so we see this terrible disparity and it ends up with our prisons uh, having a heavy disproportion of black and brown people when in fact drug use affects everybody, not just the black and brown population. My hope uh, really was that this 
Congressional uh, uh, Methamphetamine Caucus would start to talk to those who were involved with other drugs and see common ground and maybe start to treat this more as a health problem because I know that the Methamphetamine Caucus doesn't want to incarcerate all the young people in uh, the United States who've gotten caught up with methamphetamines. Yes, sir, and uh, your city of Baltimore has uh, undertaken some changes, has, right. has looked at this concept for a, a longer period of time than most. Right. Um, how do you see it uh, affecting your city? What changes have been able to be, be brought forward? Well, there? Baltimore still has, unfortunately, an ongoing problem uh, with homicide, but I'll just give you one example. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, as my students remind me now, I was the mayor in the last century, so, uh, but in the uh, early uh, 1990s, we implemented a needle exchange, a sterile syringe exchange program. And what that uh, did, it didn't increase drug use, but it did dramatically decreased the spread of AIDS in our city, particularly among those, the intravenous drug using community. And that had a really uh, profound and positive impact on uh, public health in Baltimore. So we see that these healthcare interventions can have a positive uh, impact without contributing uh, or making people uh, feel that we're soft on drugs or encouraging drug use. It's, it's a constant battle uh, which state leads the nation in its incarceration state, yeah, uh, in yeah. its incarceration rate, whether it's Louisiana or Texas or even California. Uh, in Texas, they still don't allow needle exchange. What might you say to those legislators down there? Well, I would say that if they allowed policies to be made by science and not politics, that uh, they would allow things like needle exchange to uh, occur. Um, it's a long uh, road. In order to get our program passed, I actually brought some uh, law enforcement officials from Europe uh, where they had great experience with this and brought them to our state legislators so our legislators could hear from guys who were tough cops uh, that they felt that treatment and things like needle exchange were important and were actually helpful to them, not harming uh, their ability to uh, focus on other criminal activity. One last question for you, sir. Uh, it's been my observation that this drug war has lasted some 35 years, 50 yeah. years, or even 100 years Almost if you go back, that's right. back to the Harrison Narcotics Act. Right. And, and I, I guess the question is, sir, these politicians have, if you will, made their bones by yeah. being tough on crime, by being tough on drugs. Yeah. How do they change 180 degrees? What would you say to them in that regard? Well, uh, one thing I, I do point out in my own experience when as a, a new mayor, I raised uh, this whole issue about the need to change national uh, drug policy. Some people thought that was the end of my career. I ended up getting reelected uh, twice. And I think it's, uh, if you're honest with people and you go to them and you try to explain that, uh, you know, if we were conducting any other war, this long with these results, we'd not only want to have new generals, we'd want to have a new policy. I think people will begin to understand and give the politicians some cover so that they can uh, adopt these new and more effective policies. Hi, this is Dean Becker of the Drug Truth Network and Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. We're a group of approximately 7,000 members worldwide, including many current and former police chiefs, cops, wardens, and many others who have come to the conclusion that the drug war is an abject, abysmal failure. We're here to educate these politicians to the fact that because of their policy, we support terrorists in Afghanistan, we insure billions to the cartels in Colombia and Mexico, and we insure profits, continuing profits, for the violent gangs that entice our children with dreams of profits or highs. We want to invite you to become part of that change. Visit our website, leap.cc.